Good morning, Library Adventurers, and welcome to Library Adventures Live. My name is Kirsty, and I work for Kirklees Libraries. We've had a great start to Library Adventures Live. I hope you've been using Joseph's top tips for developing your writing skills. You can still send in your funny poems to entertain us all. And how about your robot drawing skills that we were developing with uh, Rebecca last week? How many mm, sulky, sneezy, shy or sinister robots have you created? Rebecca's challenge was to create a home of the future. What would your futuristic home be like? Would it have a room full of tasty bubbles that you could eat? Or maybe a room that converted into a football pitch with just a thought from your mind? What do you think? Or how about a screen that introduced you to new authors every single week? Ah, you don't need to wait for the future for that one. You just need to keep watching Library Adventures Live every week. So uh, you can still email in your challenges from each week to our email address. Let me just get that up to remind you what that looks like, which is frontline.services at kirklees.gov.uk. So you just keep using that to email us in any ideas and any questions that you might have for today. Oh, no, do that one for next week. Do that for next week. Right then, are we ready? This is going to be a good one today. I can hear the ref's whistle letting us know that this week's match is ready to kick off. And I know we're going to have a football fantastic time. So the authors that we've got for you today that I'm just about to introduce you to are Matt Oldfield, who's the author of Unbelievable Football, and Johnny Ball, Accidental Football Genius, which I think is such a great name. He's also written books with his brother about football heroes. I think we're all going to have questions about that one later. I've got brothers. I'd love to know how he does that. Tom Palmer is best known for his Football Academy and Foul Play series. He's been a favourite visitor for many years to Kirklees Libraries and his penalty shootouts when he comes to visit are things of legend now and always really popular. Both authors love books and reading and football. So we're going to have a great morning. So let's meet them now. It's my pleasure to introduce you all to authors Tom Palmer and Matt Oldfield. There we go. Hi there. Hello. Strange Let's go back. Is that view? Is that slightly better view? There we go. That's good stuff. <laughs> there we go. Right. So, Matt and Tom, um, over to you. Do you want to introduce yourselves a bit briefly and then we'll start our, our chat about football and reading? Yeah? Okay. Um, let me go first. So, um, yeah, my name is Matt Oldfield. And um, as I've already been introduced, I'll show you the books to just help. So this is um, Johnny Ball, Accidental Football Genius, as we said. I'm very glad that you enjoyed the title, Kirsty. Thank you. Um, and I also have, I've got this massive pile of football books here, so I'm going to work my way through. This is Unbelievable Football, which is another one I wrote. And as we were saying, we've got the um, Ultimate Football Hero series as well, which I wrote with my brother, Tom. And that is me. Over to Tom. Other Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, thank you for having us on, um, Kirsty. So uh, my name's Tom Palmer, um, and I'm a children's author as well. And I've done football series like the Football Academy series and the Foul Play books as well. Um, and I do history books um, as well, which I'll show you in a minute. But I also write a series called Roy of the Rovers, um, which is about Rocky here and Roy there. And they're a brother and sister um, who are sort of, in a football team called Melchester Rovers, and this is their shirt. Um, <laughs> they're, um, they're sort of moving up um, to the elite level, but I've also written a book um, for, that would interest, hopefully, Huddersfield Town fans, of which there should be a few um, watching. Um, it's called Over the Line, although it's got a new cover now. That's the new cover. Um, but it's called Over the Line, and this is about two um, Huddersfield Town players who gave up being Huddersfield Town footballers to fight in the First World War, and it's based on real, real players. So that's uh, a short introduction to me. Brilliant, brilliant. Lots of books for you all to find out and read about. So I think we're going to start off with um, you and uh, Matt uh, having a chat about um, some of your books and your ideas and how they bring together kind of love of reading and football. Is that is that a fair yeah, place yeah. to start? Could... Absolutely. So first of all, it's really nice to um, finally talk to you, Tom. Um, you do, Tom. I feel like we've sort of circled each other for, for many years. Um, <laughs> well, maybe it's more just me following you around. I don't know. Um, but no, it's really cool. Finally, um, be introduced and, and chat. 
and you too as well. And um, I know, um, I know that when I go into schools, um, one of the um, a lot of when I talk about reading, um, a lot of them talk about your books. In fact, um, the um, one of the books I use in the football reading game quiz that, was, that, um, that Kirsty mentioned earlier, I use this. Um, I've used this in hundreds of um, hundreds of schools, literally. And I, so I ask questions, and the question for this one is: um, Which four teams has Gareth Bale played football for? Which you, mm -hmm. you wrote the book, but so I always <laughs> use that. And, um, they are really popular. I'm sure um, your Johnny Ball book is going to be equally popular in schools too. Oh, thank but you. Who do you support, Matt? Anyway, uh, I am a Southampton fan. I thought yeah, you were. From, I'm, uh, yeah, from Southampton, um, and you know. Support the local team, and you are a Leeds United fan. And I am a Leeds United fan, yes, because um, I'm from I'm from Leeds as 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 you are from your hometown. But I live in Halifax now, and um, so I like to see them do well. But I don't sort of have that same sort of passion um, for them. Yeah. But so you, must, you... you must still be buzzing about uh, promotion, no? I am. Yeah, thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, and it you sort of, it's one of those things where you wake up every morning and you can't believe that. It, it's finally happened after 16 years. My daughter's 16, and then um, so since she we went we went down sort of quite soon after she was um, so born, and so it's, it's kind of lovely to to have both both positive things in my life. However long yeah. it's going to last, I don't know. <laughs> Did you when um, when you when you were younger, Matt? Um, yeah. were you, was was has football always been big for you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, well, I've, so Tom. My older brother, who yeah. I write the Ultimate Football Hero series with, he's he's two and a half years older than me, and sort of seemingly from the day he was born, he was massively into football, and so like so many kind of sibling pairs, we just ended up. You know, I followed and wanted to do exactly what he did. Yeah, I'm just playing football together a lot, and we spent a lot. Yeah, we would go to the Dell, well, the old Southampton ground, yeah. um, a lot. And my dad's a Manchester United fan, so. Every year, we would at the very least we'd be down there to watch Manchester United play. But obviously, right. some of us would be supporting one team <laughs> from the other. And there are some big historically. There have been some big Southampton wins uh, over United. At, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you never tell your dad about them, do you? I'm sure you never. No, 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 no. So, as a football fan, as a young football fan, with them um, was reading an important thing for you like did you always read a lot or did you read about football what what was it for you um I think for me I think reading went quite a lot beyond football so there were a few um I was looking at this is one of my very early football readers uh, Stanley Bagshaw an absolute yeah. classic um and another one was um a book called Football Crazy by Colin McNaughton. I thought I had a copy, but I can't find it anywhere. Yeah. It's about um, a team of animals. Um, and a bear, he's not very good at football, but becomes a goalkeeper. Oh, it's great. I love that book. Yeah. And so I felt with my childhood, I read a lot of books about football when I was very young. But then yeah. was this age when I was became, you know, I could read on my own and I was getting more confident with it, where I don't think I was reading so much about football. And that's partly because... I don't think there was that much around um, in terms of fun football reading. Um, I think, for example, with Roy the Rovers, I yeah. think in a way I was exactly in between the yeah. two, The two, you know, obviously there was the amazing early stages of Roy the Rovers and then there's been this brilliant relaunch now. But I think when I was young, I was kind of in between those two. And there just wasn't that much available. And so I think actually I went through a long period of time where I was either reading about other things so you know re I would read fiction about you know animals or you know science fiction you know anything else but yeah. also I then went straight to reading adult football biographies and yeah. I would find books about my favorite players and then read those so there was a kind of football kind of disappeared for a little while in the middle um, and that's yeah. what inspired us as, as brothers to kind of write those books was the yeah. fact there was something missing there that we really thought that kids would love yeah, and they do. So you, you, that was bang on, wasn't it? <laughs> I, was, um, I, I struggled a lot with reading when I was when I was younger, and I was quite. Um, I really did struggle. I didn't didn't enjoy it, and um, and my mum knew that I was I was struggling with reading, and so she got me reading things like match reports and newspapers and 
magazines like like Match um, and Shoot, which was one of the magazines then. And gradually, she sort of stimulated me and got me into reading through my love of football. And then I went on to books. And like you, I read footballers' biographies, um, autobiographies. and But they were – then they were written for um, – they were very much written for adults, weren't they? And they had some yeah. quite challenging stuff. Like I remember one of the first ones I read was about Jimmy Greaves. Um, and it was an amazing book, but he he had issues with, with alcohol. And um, and reading about that was quite an eye-opener to me when I was when I was relatively young. But I did re I read history books and I like um what I got into about I suppose like 20 plus years ago, the, the there was new books about football in different countries. So you could read about football in South America and Spain and, and you yeah. could read about the big clubs like Barca and, and Real, but you could read about more than just on the pitch, but the stuff behind the club. So the rivalry between Barcelona and Real Madrid, as, as you well, as you well know, is, is, is about politics and regions and war and, and some quite difficult um, things. And I love, I love reading about um, those sort of backstories as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like football, because I mean, we, we were saying we were going to be discussing our kind of favourite football reading. And I think one of the amazing things about football is is just the the different types of literature, types of books that you can have yeah. that all kind of have this football as a common theme in the middle. But really, they explore so many different things you know they go off in so many different directions so as you say you've got books that maybe also talk about the history of countries um you know the different cultures the different experiences you know there's just so many angles that you can if you've got that love of football in the first place i think yeah. it's an amazing way of then exploring other things in a way that yeah and with those um along with your books the football school books um yeah are amazing. they they take you out into it's more you know it's about history and other things on the curriculum they're fantastic also yeah. so i mean and we are i suppose readers are living i'm sure you find that kirsty in libraries don't you that um there's so much good stuff about football for children to read now yeah yeah and things like um the helena's books as well that feel yeah. writes as well which are great yeah. for it's kind of acknowledging that girls love football just as much as boys we've got Absolutely. i could just see two comments come through from a Two, uh, I think my assuming children we've got Zara and Zane who are very excited watching this. I've got to do shout out for them. Hi, and hi to both of you. Absolutely, it's lovely. It's, it's, uh, and I love that kind of acknowledgement in, in writing that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a yeah. different world. It's a different world to when you were when you were children looking for those books that, that fed that interest as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's awesome. with, with girls, with Helena Piala Hattie's books, the girls' FC books, there's there's some new, new series coming out as well, aren't there? There's some new. Um, there, yeah. girls and, and standalone books about um, there's the Dick Kerr's Ladies is coming out soon I think yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. some good some good stuff yeah highly recommend well, I think what we'll do as well because you're recommending books fast and furious during this what we'll, do, <laughs> we'll, um, we'll put up a list of your kind of the books you're talking about and recommended reads we'll put them up on the website so yeah. you can go back and, and find them later as well yeah, it's great absolutely, great. absolutely so, brilliant. So Mark, Mark, for, with, for you was, was the um, was the library really important Absolutely, yeah. So um, I actually, when I was, my first kind of library memories come from um, my family moved to America for a year when I was young and um, my dad was, was working there and uh, just uh, one of my main memories from that time, I was only five at the time so I didn't have that many memories but the library just features so clearly in my mind as this just incredible space for exploring. It felt like it genuinely I think of it like a kind of an adventure world you know it's sort of that feeling of entering a space that just has so many possible adventures within it um and you know I could take out 10 books at a time or something crazy like that and so I you know I'd, I'd spend that time just going around the shelves finding different things and, and I think with libraries the really important thing is that ability to to try something and then put it back and try something else. And that yeah. you don't necessarily get when you're talking about a bookshop or something. You you want that chance to really work out what it is that you're interested in. And so you might, you know, you, maybe you already know that you absolutely love football and that's what you want to read about. But maybe you love football and you go into a library and you discover something totally different at the same time. And so you, you kind of, you explore a real range of different subjects. And uh, you know, I just, um, all the way through my childhood, I was, you know, I loved those experiences. And I think I really, um, 
you can really sort of trace the steps of growing as a reader as well. I can remember going from kind of going into libraries to pick up, you know, young kids books through to slightly older and then all the way through to reading adult novels and kind of exploring new authors. And I think all of that really helped me developing my writing at the same time as well, because obviously the more, as you well know, the more you read, you know, the more you learn about about what it takes to be a writer, but new Absolutely. skills writing as well. I remember going into the library and, and I was being scared of going into the library. I was quite, I didn't think I belonged in the library. I wasn't a reader. I didn't see myself as a reader. I thought, I thought I hated reading, but even though I read match programs and newspapers, but I'd go into the library and, and I'd be like nervous and I'd, I'd think someone's gonna come over and say, hang on, why are you here? And ask me questions. And, and it obviously it wasn't like that at all. Libraries are a place for everybody to go to. And anyone who who's, who goes up and asks the librarian about finding a particular book, you know, will, will always get helped and get the advice they need. But once I overcame that anxiety and nervousness about libraries, um, I went for the football stuff initially. But I found um, it must have been Nia, the, the travel writing section must have been near the sports section, is it, Kirsty? Uh, yeah, not far, yeah. not far. Yeah. Well, it was nice. in, in Leeds, but um, and I used to get, I used to find travel books about different countries, and I read them, and that that changed my life. From getting there in the library and reading, I'd read about places you could go to in, in sort of France and North Africa. There was a um, in the Sahara Desert, and I, I ended up like years later going to those places, going on adventures because. Like you say, a, a library can take you on adventures through the books you read, but then it, it leads on to other things in your life. And that that's football and not football. And it was going to the library that, that really did that to me and utterly, utterly changed my life um, using the library, as, as it did, obviously, for you, Matt. Yeah, and I think, I think also going back to that idea of being an author, I think that really, that experience of going into libraries and seeing all of those books around me was such an inspiring experience as well in the sense yeah. that it really from a young age that was what I wanted to do I'd look yeah. around their shelves and think to myself you know how amazing would it be if one of my books was on one of these shelves you know yeah. I think that that really it made it feel possible as well I think yeah. it sort of inspires but also makes it seem more real and, and, and a realistic thing to to aim for and Kirsty, because obviously we can get we can get books from the library, although it's trickier to get hold of them at the moment. But can you also get um, magazines and other reading material other than books? What has it has um, it worked? What we have is um, we have um, something called Press Reader in Kirklees. We have something called Press Reader, which is a, it's an e-resource. It's, it's electronic, and it allows you to to borrow for free uh, hundreds of different newspapers, magazines uh on every oh, we've got sport ones we've got we've got a huge range it's all free and you just need your library card to be able to access it so um it widens out the world or it makes the world smaller that's what it does it makes the world smaller because a lot of these publications in different languages as well so if you're someone who's moved from, from another country to come and live in in, in great britain you can still access yeah. uh, magazines and newspapers in uh, the language in the country you were born in as well which i think is phenomenal as well awesome. so it's brilliant oh yeah they can get those no problem at all yeah. so if you don't fancy a book not a problem at all. We, we, we've got loads of other things you can borrow. Yeah, but even books can, can be quite off putting. Like when um, with these these that I've yeah. done, like the, these are the longer book longer books that I've done, and it's 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 there's about two hundred and fifty sort of pages like that. And when I started out reading, I would have really struggled with that, which is why um, linking in cleverly uh, this book. Um, <laughs> I, I Smooth. Um, Smooth. Really well. For a start, the, the words aren't as densely packed on the on the pages, but also there's all the way through, there's lots of illustrations and a bit of typographic messing about like some of the, yeah. the way the letters are done. And this, this is so this is your your new book, isn't it, Matt? And it what is, um, yes. what I suppose was that important before you talk about the actual book and that was that important how it looked for you like because it is it is very um, accessible with lots of different sort of ways of getting into it absolutely yeah no I wanted this because this is my first fiction book so I yeah. really wanted it to be as absolutely accessible as possible because I think there is um obviously with the ultimate football heroes one of the big things is you know you look at the front cover and you can see your football hero 
know, and so you're immediately drawn into that world. Whereas I think with fiction, sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult if you're not tuned in to that idea of reading about, you know, imaginary characters and that kind of thing. You need a, you need something to 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 get you in. And as you say, sometimes if you if you've got pages that are packed with words, yeah, yeah. it is a it is a, it's a struggle. And um, even to just find a way into that is is a struggle. Whereas just having having these elements, as you say, some of it's just different fonts and bigger words here and there, but and then some of it's illustration. I think that was really important for me, just trying to make it feel like a really fun experience. Yeah. Yeah, and these also like the match reports and all that. Uh, I, I know they're really proper because I, I, in these, they're not as well, you know, they're not as well illustrated, but in these there's like match reports and scores for the players and that. And I, I remember like, rather than the story, that's what a lot of early readers said about, they love the the, the stats and the, the extra material. Cause it, it does, it helps you read it, doesn't it? Like, like, when you're read, like when you're reading a biography, like for adults, photographs of a place or the people that are being talked about really draws you through the book, doesn't it? And, it, it, and, and it's something that should be celebrated, I think. So yeah. do so, you want to tell us a bit about the book, Matt? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I mean, <laughs> it's hard because it's fiction, obviously, but in a way, it's a little bit kind of autobiography in there, really. Because growing up for me, I was um, a kid who loved football and had an older brother, Tom, who was a whole lot better at football than me. Um, and so he was, you know, the, the star. And yeah, I, I obviously played football all the way through and enjoyed playing it, but I kind of, you know, I was never that good. Um, and so, I guess the book kind of came from that because Johnny is, is in that same position. And whereas for me, I think at that age, I probably, instead of focusing so much on football, I turned also to do, you know, reading and writing as well. I think with Johnny, what happens is that he, he's desperate to find something that he's really good at, which I think, you know, all kids want to find something that, that they, that they enjoy, that they feel like they're doing well at, that they feel kind of a pride in. Um, and so for him, that happens to be, becoming, first of all, an assistant football manager for his school team. And then he goes on to become the, the main manager for the team. But it's about that kind of journey and and, and about that that feeling of, of being good at something, but also just enjoying. And he, as the story goes on, he becomes, you know, through the teamwork and through everything, he just become, you know, he, he has self-belief growing as well and the confidence and you know, he just, he, he feels like he's achieved something. And I think that's something that, that I really wanted to get across, that idea that sometimes, because I think that, you know, there must be other other kids that were like me, you know, in the sense that love football, but weren't, you know, aren't quite that good, but have got this brilliant brain and, you know, have got lots of ideas. And yeah, I think yeah. sometimes people think that the only thing to do with football is being a player. And that's all that everyone thinks about. But there are, why, you know, I like to think that there are so many other roles around, including obviously managers. And I think also with managers, they're more famous than ever, aren't they, really? Managers. You think about, I mean, your own Bielsa, right? <laughs> we've got Klopp, we've got Guardiola. These guys are as famous as the footballers. Yeah. And so I feel, you know, that combined with that sense of trying to find a different option for that football passion, yeah. that was what inspired me to. Brilliant. And in um, in I want one thing I'd like that I do in my books is in this um, when Jack scores his first goal for Huddersfield Town, um, his captain comes over to him and shakes hands with him, and he notices his captain's cut his hand and his, his hand's bleeding, and that that was a personal. When I scored my first goal for Pudsey Town, the captain did that to me, and his hand was bleeding. And I like to put like personal, and, and nobody knows until I've said that. I've never mentioned it before, but do you put? Are there like personal highs and, and maybe lows in there that you've grafted in? Yeah, definitely. I mean, not so much highs and lows, but just little, as you were saying there, just kind of little details that yeah, I yeah. took from, um, from from kind of the strange world of kids' football. Um, you know, I think there's just so many details, like, you know, dogs running onto pitches and manage... Um, parents being sent away for the shouts, you know, just fights breaking out, all of the kind of crazy details that they're just, they're just fun, aren't they? Um, yeah. 
think also, to be honest, going back to the Ultimate Football Heroes series, I, I, some of those details, I think, go into there as well, because obviously they, they're, they are about real life footballers, but obviously I don't know that much about their childhoods. When I'm writing about them as younger players, sometimes you have to base some of it on your own experiences and what you think kind of the average experience of being a young kid playing football, going, you know, developing up through yeah. teens is like. So, yeah, I think I also just think when you're writing from your own experiences, I don't know about you, but this is, I always find that it, it comes so much more naturally. Yeah. Um, and, and and it's just more more enjoyable to draw on yeah. stuff you have actually been through. I fi- yeah, I find that with Roy, although I, I've not played for League Two, One Championship teams, um, his family, his family situation, his, his dad's not very well and um, he's in a wheelchair and he can't speak. And that's, um, that's what happened to me when I was much, you know, like 30 plus years ago. And I like that because it gives, the, it, I suppose I'm, I'm giving him. I'm making him into a more rounded character because I'm I'm using things from 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 my life. So I agree with you. I think if you if you can do that, even though you're writing about someone who's going to end up playing for England, which is never going to happen to me. Um, <laughs> never say never. Never say never. Never say never. Um, never, never, never. <laughs> never. Uh, um, that that it it give, it makes it more real for the reader. Like those personal touches, like like you mentioned. Mm. Do you want to read us a bit? Um, yeah, let's do this. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to put on some voices for this, I'm afraid. So I'm apologies, if they're not, apologies if they're not that good, but here we go. So um, this is from uh, an early chapter in the book that's called, um, What Does an Assistant Manager Do? So this is when Johnny has just been told that he's the new assistant manager of the Tisbury primary team. And so he's trying to find out what exactly that involves. Okay. As a football player, I was good. But not that good. Now that I had ex- accidentally become a football assistant manager, I was going to be great. I would use all my football genius ideas to make my family proud of me. I was going to lead Tisbury Primary to County Cup glory and become the next Paul Porterfield. Paul Porterfield started out as the Tisbury Town assistant manager, and now he's the manager, and probably the best manager in the whole wide world. It isn't just my dad who says that, I promise. Thanks to him, Our local team has won almost as many trophies as my brother, Daniel. In fact, I was hoping that my big brother might be able to answer my question. And it was a good chance to talk to him. When we were younger, Daniel and I used to do everything together. But now that he was in year nine, he didn't have time to hang out with me so much. Actually, he didn't have time to hang out with me at all. But if there was one thing that could get Daniel talking, it was football. After school that day, I waited ages for my brother to get home so I could ask him all about assistant managers. When he finally arrived, he stormed straight upstairs without even taking his earphones out. Nice to see you too, Daniel, I said out loud, but only because I knew that he couldn't hear me. I counted the 50 and then decided to be brave. Hello, I called out, knocking on his bedroom door. These days, my brother has rules. Yeah, what's up? He called. That was the sign that it was safe to enter. In the sunlight, Daniel's room sparkled like a pirate's treasure chest. There were trophies everywhere. Gold, silver, bronze, big, medium, small, tournament cups, league titles, player of the year awards. If Daniel had been a pretty good brother once upon a time, I would really hate his talented football bats. Once he'd picked a few football magazines off the bed, there was space for me to sit down and share my news. I didn't make the school team. That's savage, bro. Sorry. But I'm the assistant manager instead. That's swipe. Classy, bro. I didn't really understand my brother's new cool kid talk. Of course, I pretended I did. Yeah, classy, bro. Anyway, what does an assistant manager do? No clue, Daniel said with his new cool kid shrug. Whatever you want, I guess. I tried to copy Daniel's cool kid shrug, but I think it looked more like a bad dad dance. Luckily, he ignored it and kept talking. Is Macho Man still the manager? That's what we used to call him. He's so hunched, it's unreal. You know what I mean? The guy knows nothing about football, though. Nothing. You know your stuff, bro. So maybe you could teach him a thing or two. Yeah, cool. Maybe, I said as a smile spread across my face. 
wait to be the assistant manager, even if I didn't really know what, it, what one did. I was so excited that I made a truly terrible mistake. I told my parents, assistant manager, eh? Dad smiled. It was such big news that he even paused the football on TV. Well done, son. Back when I was playing for the Tisbury Tigers, we didn't have an assistant manager. It was just Derek Dodds and five old footballs that were as heavy as hippos. I'm sure that's why I broke my right ankle. Did I ever tell you the story of how it happened? Oh, no, not again. Yes, Dad. Thanks, Dad, I said quickly. Come here, my little brain box. I'm so proud of you. Mum screamed, hugging me so tightly that I could barely breathe. But as long as she didn't, oh no, there it was, the double cheek pinch. Mum, stop. What does an assistant manager do? Apparently she was too proud to even hear me. We'll need to get you a smart new coat. No thanks. What does an assistant manager do? No answer. When mum was in super embarrassing mode, she was unstoppable. You're right, a tracksuit would be better. I could even sew j &B on it for you. You'll look adorable. No way. Please, mum, what does an assistant manager do? Well, you'll definitely need a clipboard, she decided. Mum, I've got it. A pocket notebook. Mum, every coach has a pocket notebook so they can write down their ideas. Mum, yes, darling. What does an assistant manager do? Uh, um, well, they uh, um, assist the um, manager. They help with, um, uh, you know, no, I didn't know. That was the problem. There was only one person left to ask, Grandpa George. He knew lots and lots about football. When Dad wasn't around to hear her, Mum said that's who Daniel got his football skills from. Grandpa George lives around the corner from our house, so I went over to visit him. What can I do for my favourite little folly flop? Grandpa George shouted loudly, wrapping me in his really, really long arms. An octopus with two arms instead of eight. That's Grandpa George. Oh, I should warn you, Grandpa George uses lots of weird long words, which are either so old that no one else remembers them, or totally made up. I'm still not sure which. Assistant manager. Well, let me see. Yes, yes, I was an assistant manager once upon a time, back when I was a young yabadoo. Malcolm McCleary, he was the manager, and he could be a mean McGovern when he wanted to be. If the team was playing badly, he would shout himself shift-eyed. What did you do, Grandpa? Well, if McCleary was blowing a real blusty, I stayed out of his way. No, I meant, what, what did you do as the assistant manager? Well, I did whatever I could to help my team. I took the training sessions, I picked the players, and I tried to keep everyone hippy hoppy happy. All the important thing in my noodles. Did you like being an assistant manager, Grandpa? Oh, yes. They were the best bobby dazzlers of my life, he shouted so loudly that the teacup started to shake. At last, I had an answer to my question, and being an assistant manager sounded super fun. Suddenly, Grandpa George's face froze in a great big grin. Ting! Yes, that's where I got my light bulb moments from. Daniel got the football skills, and I got the football brains. Slowly, Grandpa George got up from his chair and went into his bedroom. Crash, bang, rattle. Is everything all right, Grandpa? I asked. Yes, just looking for something. Eventually, Grandpa George returned with a very long scarf in his hand. It had grey and orange stripes, and it looked and smelled really old. Found it, Grandpa George said, shouting again. My lucky scarf. When I wore this beauty, we won every melodic match. And with that, he handed the scarf to me. It was mine now. Wow, I didn't know what to say. Luckily, I went for, thanks, Grandpa, instead of, I think this needs a wash. What was I waiting for? I was now set to become Johnny Ball, assistant manager, the next Paul Porterfield, and the future number one football genius in the whole wide world. <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, you thank know. You. <laughs> oh, awesome. Oh. I hope we want to read next. We want to see what happens next, don't we, now? <laughs> <laughs> So do you have an e-book at the library, Kirsty? Could, could that be borrowed as an e-book as well? Uh, I'd need to get someone to check. I'm not sure we've got that one yet. I'm not sure yeah. yet. But um, when, we, when, we, when we're back open again, that yeah, could be definitely. one of the ones on the shelf. Absolutely. Absolutely. We love new football series. Brilliant. Brilliant. Is it going to be a series, Matt? Is it going to be a series? It or? is. Yeah. So, well, so there are two, two at the moment. We'll 
Fingers crossed there'll be more after that, but the second one's coming out in January. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, we have actually got a question. Should we do a, should we do a quick question for Matt? Yeah, there's a quick question. Well, there's um, some Zach Fulgoni, who's a fan, read all your books. Um, favorite football hero books. One looking forward to Rashford. Any chance of a book on uh, Buffon or Czech? What are we thinking here? Do you know which ones you're going to be doing? I'll bring, the, bring this up. Here we go. Um, there we go. Right. There's a, it's a goalkeeper. I, I'm assuming that Zach's a goalkeeper. Um, <laughs> so we've, got, we've done Alisson. Um, as far as I know, Buffon and Czech aren't on our list, but we can always add them in and um you know it's a kind of never-ending list so <laughs> i bet, I bet. Um, and you've got a reader ready made right there look zach's waiting exactly, zach is yeah. I mean, <laughs> if, if zach's gonna read it then i you know i'm happy to write it so <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> cool 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 right um, shall, so, we, shall, shall i ask um can i ask some yeah. stuff about because i've got over the line here which, oh, is, which I, I, I really do love, um, oh. and it's a great book. And I just wanted to ask, first of all, obviously, um, up to that point, because it, am I right in thinking you wrote this in 2014? Or published in 2014, anyway? Probably. Um, I don't know. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but um, what I was thinking was, because at the time you, you were writing the Football, um, football Academy and Football uh, Detective series, yeah. and, and I just wondered, going from that, what inspired you to decide to write about a real historical figure? I would never have dared, um, really, to be honest, because I didn't, I didn't really see myself as a history sort of writer, but I'm really glad I did, because since this came out, I've written a few other history books. And um, there was an, another, another author called George Myerson, who, who, was, who writes nonfiction for adults. He, he sort of gave me the story and, and we, he helped me with it as well. But he heard this story about this young footballer um, who was a Huddersfield Town player. And um, he started his career just when the First World War had, had broken out. And he ended up um, giving up being a footballer and going to fight in the First World War. And the, the story behind him, which is kind of given away at the beginning, so it's not like giving it away, um, is that after the First World War, he survives, although some of his fellow soldiers don't. Um, but he he goes on to score England's first goal after World War One. So after all the horror and the, the death and the, the utter international trauma of the First World War, um, he goes on to his dream comes true. Because we obviously like we read a lot of stories about people during the, the First World War and they, they, many were killed and many were injured. But and most soldiers who went out there survived and many went back to to live well, troubled in, the, in this case, um, lies, but he goes on to do that. And he said, this this should be a great story. So in a way, he gave it to me. And that, I think writing about history, I would never have done it. But because it's about football as well, about real people, I gave it a go. And because that worked, then I got confident. And it's the same with reading, isn't it? You read something and you're confident to read something a bit different, a bit more challenging. And it, it so this book was like a real um, crossroads for me in a good way. Yeah. And, and one of the things I really, uh, really enjoyed about the book is is that kind of that perfect balance between the, you know, the fun football action, which is still there, especially in the early bits. Yeah. Alongside that, you know, the horrors of the war and, you know, you, some of it, it's quite, quite shocking, the, the detail that you include in there. Was it, was it hard to find the balance between those two, between the kind of, because you want it to be fun, you want the football to be there, but you don't want yeah. it to you want the war to be there too obviously to to be honest i just went war football war football war. <laughs> <laughs> just because i knew like what you're saying you don't want just unending people like reading and watching films about war but you kind of need to break it up for personal mm. choice. so i just sort of alternated obviously towards the end of the war it, it sort of went war football war 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 and then football at the end but that was the that was the structure I had in mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um and and here's a question for you. And so you're in Jack's position, you're the corporal. If you had to pick five modern footballers, current footballers, to be in your in your squad, who would you choose? Um I'd start with Calvin Phillips. Obvi obviously, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. That makes Probably. sense. <laughs> Pablo Hernandez, um, I think. 
Uh, you know, play, players like that, I suppose. But I suppose like, I'd, I'd want I'd want Gareth Southgate there as well, sort of. Yeah. Um, because I think he's he's under pressure. He think he thinks clearly. So you need you need people like that. But you also need your like your um, I was going back a bit. Your David Batty's and your um, <laughs> you know, your, your, your people like that. So a group a group of that. But yeah, okay, that's that's a good squad. I like that. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, for me, like because living in living in. West Yorkshire and living in Halifax and coming from Leeds, um, I like I was into it because it was a local story as well. So it's a story, obviously, like we're we're working with Kirk Lees today. It's um it's a story about um, a team in my area, and that that appealed to me as well. Um, I suppose because I I like it and I like setting stories in in the north of England, and that's where I'm from. And I did I really I used to think that to be an author you had to be from London. And that people from Southampton and Leeds couldn't be authors because you had to be posh and from London and all all these things. But um, when I read Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte and other books by yeah. Yorkshire authors, that really inspired me. So now when I write, even the Royal Rovers books, uh, they, they're clearly set in Northern England, and I love I love doing that. Um, I suppose I don't know, because I suppose because I'm trying to. I suppose maybe I'm trying to write for me when I was younger, or maybe I'm trying to write for people um, in the local area where I live, as well as in Southampton. Yeah, but I think I think that's so important, isn't it? Well, with with children's books now, one of the things that we're really trying to do is is make sure that they that everyone can read yeah. about their own environment, you know, yeah. and, and recognise yeah. themselves yeah. in in the books, whether that is yeah. in the north of England or the south, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so no, I think that that makes total sense, and and I suppose when it comes to a book like that, um, does it make it slightly easier with the research side of things? Because if, if presumably there were more, you know, papers and stuff that you could actually base the characters on. Yeah, and and to go, to go to the places, so like reading reading local newspapers, as you say, using local libraries. Um, so the book I've got coming out quite soon after the war is it's about children who go to live in the Lake District and um, having survived the Holocaust and um, I, I went to libraries and read old newspapers in in Cumbria to get all that detail and I went to the places they stood and slept and ate and I went and if you even though it's 75 years ago or in this case 105 years ago like if you go to the place like if you go to um, where the Leeds Road Stadium used to be, where Huddersfield Town used to play, um, you can see that it's in a it's in quite a tight tight valley. There's a, there's flat, and it just gives you an idea of like where would they have lived? They'd have lived in those houses up there. So I know what it'd be like. They'd be walking home through these sorts of buildings, and you can look at old photographs, and um, the, you've got a better access to in, in in where you're from. So yeah, absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> How about, do we have time for a reading? Yeah, yeah, let's do it, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Focus on two. this is about um, some real footballers in particular, um, Jack Cox and Fred Bullock, who were Huddersfield Town players in 1914, 1915. And they, I've read I've read about them and what, what they achieved um, and did in the First World War. So, um, but one, one thing I want, because I knew there'd be some Huddersfield Town fans watching, um, one of the last games that Jack played at Huddersfield Town before he moved on um, to fight um, in France is, um, is they go to Arsenal, and this is Arsenal away, so it's Arsenal versus Huddersfield Town. And I'll just read you, like, about the three three-minute bit. Highbury Stadium in North London took my breath away. It was more like a palace than a football ground. The, gra the glass and stone entrance and marble halls made it even more impressive than Stamford Bridge, where I used to go to watch Chelsea. I'd played several games for Huddersfield by the time we played Arsenal. My performance, my performances had got better as I became happier among my teammates, but I was nervous about this game. We were in the capital, playing one of the best teams around. We came from the railway station on a coach and we saw London at war. Soldiers marched through the streets. Horses pulled huge guns to the docks bound for France. I was trying to put the war out of my mind, to focus only on football. But the meaning of the game and of the other team, the name of the other team, Arsenal, was not lost on me. 
Arsenal is a team born of war. And Arsenal is a place where the weapons are stored. And Arsenal Football Club drew its first players from the Woolwich Arsenal in London. That was where they'd made the bombs and the guns and the bullets that were being used right now in the trenches in France. Huddersfield Town's first goal came from the wing. Our winger moved to the left and fired a low ball to me, but the Arsenal defence were tracking me close, so I drew them away from the goal. Frank Mann found a pocket of space and he snapped up the pass and scored. 1-0. Bullock ran alongside me and slapped me on the back. Good work, Jack. The second goal came five minutes into the second half. I started it. It, I thundered my way up the field with the ball at my feet, then slipped a pass to another forward. He shot. The goalkeeper held it, but I hit him hard with my shoulder and he lost his balance. The ball spun across the goal mouth to Frank Mann, who tapped home again. Arsenal nil, Huddersfield two. With minutes left, I decided to make my mark. I was happy to set up goal, but I wanted more than this. I took a pass 40 yards out. But this time, I didn't back into the defender and play it wide to the winger. I turned to take the Arsenal defence by surprise. First, I slipped past their captain, Chris Buckley. He tried to knock me off balance, but I shouldered him out of the way. When a second defender came at me, I sped and hit the ball hard towards the bottom corner. When the goal went in, I felt an explosion inside me. All the bad thoughts and feelings of the day were blown to pieces. I had scored a goal, a great goal, and I'd made an important decision. And that was the point in the story where, where Jack decides that he's going to stop being a footballer and he's going to go and fight in the First World War and particularly in the Battle of the Somme. Um, and that's kind of the, the point where everything changes for him and, and he goes to do what he, he feels is his duty for his country. Brilliant. Thanks, uh, thanks Ty. It's, it's great that mixture of uh, facts and fiction together. I love this. It's been a kind of a theme. An un unexpected theme for today has been this mixture of... Uh, how you can bring the two things together and True. create exciting or, or humorous, really funny stories as well. It's, it's brilliant, really good. We've got time for some questions. There's some questions been coming in, and I've got some on my phone as well from people. Are you ready for some questions, guys? Yes. Let's test you out. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> okay, let's have a little look. So there's one here from Jake, who is asking. This has come through to us. Um, at school, we plan a story using a story mountain. Intro, characters, plot, problem, solution, twist, and ending. Do you map things out first or just dive into the writing when you're writing? Do you map out or do you just dive in? Tom, Tom, you should get first in this because I've seen your your walls of post-it notes. And oh, stuff. Yeah. Like, you're, you're, you're the king of planning. Go, go, go. Yeah, um, planning. Planning is really important to me. And the main reason is I can't, I can't keep everything in my head. I can't, I just can't keep, in fact, the book, I've been working, just stay there. We won't go anywhere. <laughs> we'll enjoy the cutouts. This <laughs> morning, the cat woke me up at five, and so I started. Um, and this is the story I've been working on. And each each little piece of paper is is a chapter in the book. Um, and so I, I write it all down. Then then I don't forget it and I keep it. And I've got one one plan. This is the plan for after the war. Um, and this is it's just this huge. <laughs> and, and if you each blue bit is a chapter um wow. and each different color is one of the, the the main characters so there's three main characters yeah. for me but if you use post-it notes um for me because once you write something down you have to it's kind of stuck on the page but if you use post-it notes you can swap the order until you get and so if you swap the order of the events then you can tell the story with it, it, it's better for the reader because um, you're telling it in a, a better order. So I find using post-it notes and stuff like that really helps with planning. Um, but the idea, yes, the idea of a story mountain and um, the, the twists and like the graph of it going exciting, less exciting, exciting. Less, I, I think of all those things when I'm writing. Um, so a lot of what they do in schools really is um, how writers how writers do write. But everyone writes differently. And, and Matt probably has his own methods. <laughs> well, I think I need to. Up, I think I need to up my game. Um, uh, with the, I guess it, it depends what I'm writing because if I'm writing the the hero series, when, when you're talking about real life yeah. stuff, sometimes I find that those books uh, sort of you can plot the story much, much more. It's a it's a it's a simple process when yeah. you're talking about a real life story and you're just going through the different stages. 
Um, so for that, I find that I can normally, as long as I plan out what each chapter is going to be about, I probably don't need too much more of a structure to, you know, I can then just get, get writing as long as I know what I'm, what stories I'm trying to tell along the way. Um, but I definitely, one of the big things I found when I was writing fiction instead of nonfiction was that you suddenly, you, as, as Tom, you were just saying, you, you really do need to understand the directions that you're going in and, and, and that, that post map is, is a great way of doing it. Um, yeah. You really do suddenly need to need to understand where your story is going in a way that maybe you didn't with nonfiction so much. But you, when you did your novel, then did you, did you yeah. stick to your plan, or did you um, not stick to your plan? Um, I mean, it started out as I mean, I think I started by just writing and writing and writing, and right. not much, much of a plan because it kind of it started out as a sort of side thing that I was doing. I was kind of writing the heroes but books but I was also on the side I was thinking oh you know I've got this story that I'd like to tell so I was writing and writing and writing and then it was I mean having an editor helps so much um yeah that was when I I'd never realized how important an editor can be until I tried to turn what I had in the way of the Johnny Ball story into something to actually work as a as you were saying about the kind of Exciting, less exciting, the twists, the yeah. kind of... That's that. an important point, isn't it? Because people, often you meet you meet children and adults who think that you, or, or I just write the book and it's done and we, because we're really good at writing, and um, supposedly. But actually, um, we go through draft after draft after draft, and then the editor gets hold of it and they say, right, like with D-Day Dog, I had to change 80% of that. Uh, the, main, the main narrative drive the main character you saw it through I had to switch from him to someone else and um, I made all those changes and and she was absolutely spot on right and she taught me loads about about writing and and I know like but some 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 children think that or adults think that rewriting is a bit of a pain but actually um rewriting and having someone edit you and, and teach you how to become a better writer every book I write I'm learning from the the editors that I work with and um, without it, it just wouldn't have happened yeah. yeah, I think it's good to know, isn't it? So if, if you're trying something, you think that's right. It's not about just giving up. It's about the fact that you just keep going, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. it. Inspired to keep I, going. Think, I think the story, the story mountain stuff, it definitely helps. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Kind of, as long as you can be a little bit flexible with it, I think, I think it's always what you want is you want some kind of structure to help you to keep going, but you don't want it to be something that is so strict that it stops you. And yeah. yeah. As long as you're in your head, as you're using a structure like that, you're thinking, you know, oh well, if I have a slightly different idea, then I can, I can move away from, you know, I think having something there to keep you going is, is good. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just yeah. Uh, I'm just reminded when Joy, we had Joseph um, Coilo did the first Library Adventures live, and one of his top tips was have fun. And I think it's about yeah. using that kind of structure, but making sure you're enjoying it as well. And you can yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't want it to feel yeah. like a, a drag. No, no, brilliant, brilliant. That's a great answer. Hopefully, Jake, that means we're going to have lots of wonderful stories written by you coming through to our libraries very, very soon. <laughs> okay, no pressure. Um, so we know we had a message from Sam and Daniel Gibbons who um, said they'd love both of your books, especially Foul Play and Prey Ground to the Pitch. Thanks for encouraging Regents. That's a nice one. And they really enjoyed meeting you. So uh, nice. That's lovely. Then we did start. Uh, thanks, Daniel. And then we've got one from, let me just bring this one up onto the screen, I think. This could be to either of you, I think, uh, from Eamon, Eamon, uh, asking, have you done one on trend? I think that could go to either of you, I think, don't you think? I think it's one for me. Um, yeah, so there, there is um, Trent Alexander-Arnold's coming out. Uh, uh, it's, let me get this right, December, December. Yeah. December, make a note. Don't worry, don't worry that book is coming. That book's coming. There's lots of questions about who you're going to be doing. There's lots of interest <laughs> Yeah. I think they want some, you know, there's a little list working up here. Uh, so we've got another one for Matt saying from Joshua saying, Who are the next player books to come out? There we go. Okay, uh, so we've got so Alison just came out, this one uh, came out in July, and then we have Rashford coming out of that, which I think is going to be a popular one. Then we've got Deli Alley, then now I'm testing myself. 
I should really have a list up on my ah, I love it. You work. Um, <laughs> then, oh no, then we've got um, a Choose Your Own Adventure, which is going to be a slightly different kind of book. So it's going to be about the life of Cristiano Ronaldo, but as the reader, you get to choose which path you take. In this different Ooh. Life. Well, I love that. So that's going to be a slightly different yeah. kind of book. And then it's Alexander Arnold. Brilliant. Someone out, but that sounds yeah. good. Do the players do, do the players have any involvement at all? Or they don't. No. Like, so it's um, you know, it's 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 a slightly sort of gray area, obviously. But um, well, you're, I mean, you're allowed to write a book about someone, aren't you, and tell their story? Yeah. As long as you don't say it's controversial, then it's fair. Exactly. Game. Yeah. We we just have to be a little bit careful about. Yeah. So again, we wrote a book about Suarez. You know, we had to be a little bit careful about the yeah. Bible, and you know. Sedans and all that stuff, but um, but no, in in general, it, it's uh, yeah. I think on the one hand, I would think it's a little bit of a shame because it would be so nice if we could have a bit more of their, you know, if they were more willing to tell their own stories, then it, it you know, we'd get the detail right. It would be, you know, everything would be perfect. But on the other hand, I do, I think sometimes, especially with modern footballers, everything would be very controlled, and I think it would be, it might sort of shut the story down a bit in a way. Um, so I think it works both ways. I think it would be nice to have their involvement in these books, and I'm yeah. sure they're aware of the books being around. Um, yeah. But they, they have articles written about them all the time in magazines and newspapers. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and maybe not quite as positive a kind of a yeah, yeah. As, a, as a message. Yeah, because um, yeah, ultimately they're very much you know the books about role models, and they're they're about you know we, what we're trying to do is take the positive experiences and the life lessons. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. they wouldn't be too upset that that's in these books really. No, I think yeah, who wouldn't want to be a role model, absolutely. Yeah. Um I did have one from a from a from a from a colleague who's a big uh women's football fan, uh to ask if there were gonna be any books that, um about football heroes who are winning. That's on my phone, sorry, that one's come through on. Do you know? Oh, right, yeah. um, so there are there um there are four. Um so these were brought um written by uh, Charlotte Brown. So they're, they're in the same series as, as Ultimate Football Heroes, but um, were written by Charlotte Brown. Um, they came out around the World Cup last year. So we did um, Kelly Smith, uh, Frank Kirby, Marta, and Alex Morgan. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. I'm really hoping that they will continue. Um, I don't know, you know, it's one of these publishing decisions. I just don't know. I, I hope that there'll be more because I think that Women's World Cup was so popular and that so many heroes came out of that tournament that it seems a shame that we're not telling those stories. But um, Keep trying. Keep, keep, keep asking about them and that's why, we, that's why you get yeah. things in, 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 isn't it? So I'm going to ask you one more question each and then I think that's our time done. So um, I don't think we can let you both go without asking, who are your football heroes? If you have one, one each, who is your biggest football hero if you go with tom first you got one you can pick out um i suppose of of everybody lucas radaby who was a leeds player and and particularly because he had such um well one because he had an interesting life um in south africa be before he before he became a professional footballer but also i met him and worked with him in some leeds libraries and he was just a really nice guy who who wanted to give to his community and so he was and also as a player he was part of a, a, a really exciting Leeds team that I enjoyed watching. Brilliant, brilliant. What about you Bat? Um, it's hard because I've got Gianfranco Zola on my wall behind me. Um, <laughs> as a kid I did, I must, I have to confess that for a short period of time I did sort of move away from Southampton slightly and and become a little bit of a Chelsea fan as well, mainly because of, of Jan Frank is over. So it would definitely be one, um, but Matt Letizia would be the other. Um, ah, wow, interesting. Were, yeah. Have you read Cool by Michael Morpurgo? Sorry, Have you read Cool by Michael Morpurgo? No, I haven't. It's one of his football books, and um, Zola makes a really important appearance in it. Ah, right. I need to read that. It's all awesome. your reading list. <laughs> I'm adding that to mine. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 
Awesome. Right. Is there anything else that either of you, Tom and Matt, would like to add? Or there's been some lovely comments. People have been really thrilled with your answers. Some excited children waiting for the book we've been talking about to come out. And I can just say that uh, Johnny Paul is if we go on later on today. There are multiple copies been bought on our ebook site today. So you can all go on and start to read Matt's book. They've just found a copy that's come up. So that's fantastic. If anyone's in Halif if anyone's in Halifax on Sunday at two o'clock, I'm doing a signing. So um, cool. and it's not far away. In the Peace Hall in Halifax. Peace Hall in Halifax on Sunday. On Sunday. Tom's doing a book signing, people. So if you're in Halifax on Sunday, I'm sure he'd be really, really happy to see you. And you can come and talk about the, the conversation we've had today, which has been absolutely brilliant. Matt, anything else you'd like to add just before we finish up? Not really, no. Just wishing everyone a happy summer holidays, really. And um, you know, do do go to your local libraries and, and use them this summer and find, you know, read read for fun. Don't feel like you have to read certain things, but just explore and work out what, what it is that you're you're into. Brilliant, brilliant message, brilliant message. Um, right, okay, so I'm going to finish up. I'm going to leave you on screen with me, guys, so best to you. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to tell you all about next week. So that's been great, absolutely fantastic. And we've had no fouls or unnecessary tackles. It's been awesome. Uh, so this week's challenge that we're setting you, based on how much we've talked about today about um, stories that are based on real-life people and real-life um, times, is all I want you to do today is your challenge for Library Adventures Live is to tell us about a player that would inspire you to write a story and why. So just, just a sentence, what would that football player be? And if you don't like football, you've got another sport that you like, we'll, we'll, we'll accept other sports. Uh, what player would inspire you to write a story and then why? Okay? Very, very cool. So all you need to do then is when you come up with your idea is just send them in to us. Let me put the right banner up to our email address. There it is at the bottom, frontline.services at kirklees.gov.uk. And everything that gets sent in to us, you'll display on our website, this one here. So, and you better see when, when people have been sending in photographs and pictures of things they've done in previous weeks, you can go and have a look on there. But that's what I want to see. Which player would inspire you to write a story and why? We're really excited to know this. Maybe you've, been, you've had really got great ideas as you've been listening to Matt and Tom, I bet you have. So that's the challenge for today. So next week then, which author we've got next week for you? So next week, we're going to be meeting Emma Ray, a very different session next week. And she'll be introducing us to her new book, My Name is River. It's an adventure set in the Amazon with brilliant characters, dangerous secrets, and my favourite bit, a great Dane puppy. I love that. What's, how can you miss that one? Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I just need to tell you, if you're looking for a fun holiday activity, then why not check out Silly Squad? Now, so Miss Silly Squad is this year's summer reading challenge. It's, it's only online. It's been done slightly differently. And our friends at the reading agency are running it for us this year. So if you go to this website on the bottom of the screen there, so it's summer reading challenge all smooched into one big one word, .org.uk, you go to that website, you can join the summer reading challenge uh, and find out more information there. So why not have a go, do some reading and uh, see what they're doing on City Squad on the summer reading challenge there. If you're missing borrowing books from Kirkley's libraries, then if you have a look at Kirkley's Together website, You'll find out about Ring and Read. Ring and Read is a new way for you to start borrowing books straight away from our libraries. Well, it might be a bit of a wait, but you'll find out more information about how that works. So you go to Kirkley's Together again, smoosh together, Kirkley's Together.co.uk. You'll find out about Ring and Read, which means you can start to borrow books from us again. Okay. And remember, if you've missed any of our Library Adventures live sessions, you can uh, find them on the Kirkley's Libraries YouTube or Facebook pages. So if you really enjoyed today and you've got a friend or someone else in your family that you know would love listening to, to Matt and Tom's conversation, and I, why wouldn't they? It's been awesome, loved it today. Uh, just tell them where to go. Kirkley's YouTube, Kirkley's Library's YouTube or Kirkley's Library's Facebook page. Okay, so that's us finished this week. It's been absolutely fantastic. Thank you both so much, Matt Thank and you. Tom. And, and I've got a joke I've been waiting, I've been working on for like a week. Okay, I've got to do this joke. So um, this is um, this is my joke to say goodbye. Okay, one. So thank you very much, and that's it for today. They think it's all over. It is now. There we go, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks for having us.